Hello, my name is Justin Bright, and welcome to Kerbal Space Program version 1.2.2, in which I am attempting to make Kerbals a multiplanetary species. As you can see here, we are looking at the colonization dashboard, and I have designed a space bus, or a couple of space buses. One thing to get uh, Kerbals uh, between different orbits, and one thing to get Kerbals uh, to and from Minmus. Uh, so now we actually need to hire some Kerbals to send out there. So let's see what we need here. Uh, we could use more of uh, the basic astronaut classes, but I think we're going to skip that for the moment. I can rescue them if I really need to get more. But right now what I think I would like is a handful of these new uh, 10k Kerbals that are colonists for the most part. Not just colonists, but... They all have um, single functions that are kind of broken out from the main astronaut class abilities. Because as you see, astronauts are highly, highly trained. These people are focused on one thing. And they are the kind of folks that we can actually leave on our station for the long haul. So uh, for our first trip out, we definitely need a quartermaster to enable logistics. Recruited quartermaster, I imagine. It's just going to give me a random Kerbal. That's fine. Uh, let's see, we want a farmer, a geologist, a biologist, a mechanic, technician, miner. Let's see, how are we doing? Oh boy. Well, look at that, and we actually have... Um... Wow, that's really expensive. Ha! <laughs> So anyways, it looks like they come as classes here now as well, which is, I guess, why uh, the colonization dashboard um, provides you with pilot, scientist, engineer that you can get here. And this is also going to cost me 500k, whereas it's going to be 250 for uh, using it through the dashboard. So I guess that's where we're doing that from now on. Huzzah! So... We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that are coming out, and I have space for at least three more. So let's get three colonists. Bop, bop, bop. Um, it didn't show up yet, but I imagine. And if I come back in, there they will be. So now we have ten Kerbals that we are going to be uh, using as our colonist staff for the new base so let's get going on that so we are going to the launch pad grab the star lifter shuttle do 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 clear this out so we're gonna send an actual honest to goodness pilot so valentina let's see well, let's send a child as a tourist for some reason. That's probably not good. Uh, Gersey, don't they have one more scientist? Well, I guess it's just Bob. All right, so we'll send three uh, actual astronauts. And then in the passenger module, we will send all of these wonderful colonists that we are going to be using to set up our base. Ooh. The UI is really not sure what I'm doing here. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah. So this is the Starlifter shuttle as it sits on the launch pad. Are we ready to rock? Three, two, one, launch. Go oh, yes! <laughs> oh, this thing's humongous and I love it. This thing is... Let's see, 13... I think it was 1,300 tons on the pad. It's, it's uh, launching more than a ton a second of propellant out the back of this thing. It is just monstrous. I love it. Now that we are getting into what I'm calling the... Uh, late game at least, maybe not end game quite yet, but it's definitely the late game. Um, we are launching bigger and crazier things and uh, things are getting exciting. So we're sending up some really cool stuff. So this is a five meter 
uh, stage here on the bottom here using the Space Y R5 multi ratite 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 um, engine, which has a little bit upwards of ten thousand kilonewtons of thrust. And we also had some big, huge boosters, which we ran a- Oh, smash! <laughs> uh, that's, that's fun. Anyways. And stage separation. So slowly that thing uh, retracts. But here we have the star lifter heating up just a tiny bit as it... Uh, hustles up towards apoapsis. So this thing is not quite finished yet. It is going to require a quick um, resupply before it moves on out towards Minmus because we have some, uh, like this habitation ring, for example, is going to need to be uh, booted up and it's definitely not. I, de I need something like 10,000 or 8,000 uh, material kits to make that happen. So that's going to be slightly ludicrous. Um, but we will send that up and then we will get this vessel on its way. All right, so we are turning this thing around now to circularize. Let's turn the lights on on this monster. And then start the life support modules. Each, each of these big pods, 3.75 meter pods on the side here, only put out about 600, me, uh, 600 kilonewtons of thrust. However, they are um, they have an absurd 400 second uh, specific impulse, which makes them actually, I, I tried to make this a nuclear... Um, a nuclear powered rocket, but I found that these actually worked better for what we, what I was doing. All right, so now we come around to the daylight side to open up all of our solar panels and get everything activated. Make sure that everyone is comfy for their trip. Because uh, remember, we have to bring up some additional supplies to open up the HAB ring, I think. All right, solar panels all extended. And start to agroponics. Very nice. Uh, we have HAB common. Yes, that. Okay, so I guess I can just talk about this from the back. So each one of these pods, as I mentioned, is a big hefty um, penguin stage, uh, penguin booster, um, 3.75 meters around, and they have two sets of external reaction wheels uh, just to give it some bare hope of being able to turn the ship around in any kind of um, any kind of hurry which it still turns very slowly as you see. Uh, we have back here a big tank of fertilizer, big tank of uh, life support. Um, and we have a Nomomatic 25,000, which will allow us to grow food and really extend the life of this uh, life support that we have here. Why are you turning back? You are so weird. I didn't... Like, I don't have the SAS pointing in a particular direction. It's just being strange. Okay. Uh, so ahead of that, we have the Tundra 2.5 meter Kerbitat, which I have set as a common habitation space. Uh, once again, to do that thing with the multi... Some of the uh, habitation modules you have are um, multipliers, and some of them add raw months. And I think that the Kerbitat adds raw months, and this habitation ring is going to be a multiplier. Um, although I think it gives both, so should be should be plenty one way or the other. 
And you'll notice we have some experience, uh, experiments attached to the outside here. Science Junior, Mystery Goo, that sort of thing. Because uh, I think this is going to... I might as well make this double as a um, science vessel as it flies between worlds. Uh, head of that, Mobile Processing Lab to do even more science. And a recycling module to help reduce our need for... Um, as much supplies uh the the not the instructions the um, the tool tip says that that only counts for three kerbals so i'm not sure if this is actually going to be very helpful if i'm sending the full complement of um let me see i think it's 23 that this thing can carry i think i think it's yeah like it's 16 18 plus six so that's 24 Kerbals that this thing can carry on its own. Um, so I don't think that's going to cover all of them, uh, but it should help a little, and that's really what we're looking for. Then we have this expandable habitation ring that we will be using. Missing machinery. We need to bring up 2,500 machinery, and we're also going to need to bring up like 10,000 material kits. Uh, let's see. We have all of our Kerbals stuffed in this Mark III passenger module. Um, I, it's just hard to argue with how huge those are. Uh, and then finally we have the Orca command module up front, which is a really big, cool-looking thing for, um, these sorts of interplanetary vessels. Uh, let's see. These things can have little habitats, too. Lovely, lovely. Okay. So I think that is everything on here is all activated except for this ring. So let's have Gersey Kerman jump out and survey the vessel a little bit. Beautiful. And uh, all the way up in the front here we have a... Um, what do you call it? We have the remote guidance unit that we will be using to uh, control probes locally if we need to. Um, I feel like that may never come up, but I can't imagine it will. it's going to hurt anything by having that on there. Um, and we have a shielded docking port in the front, as well as a regular docking port down here, just in case we need to attach things on the side. Alrighty, so let's see what we need next. So I would like... To deploy 46,000 material kits. <laughs> uh, okay, so 46,000 material kits, that's a lot. Are you an airlock? There we go. Board, cool. Okay, so 46,000 material kits, ludicrous, but you know, whatever. And this is going to need 2,500 machinery, so let's go get that done. All right, so here I have uh, skipped for you guys the launch of this big hefty thing, but it's basically just material kits and it is um, some machinery and a big honey badger RCS system and space Y RCS uh, ports and that's that's it. That's all there is to it. Nothing too exciting. So we are just now coming in to rendezvous with the... Um, with the Star Lifter shuttle uh, so that we can get that all set up. And we are burning through monopropellant at an alarming rate. That's, wow, that goes down really fast. These are, <laughs> the, there's like 20 or 30 kilonewtons of thrust just in the RCS ports on this thing. So I maybe should have packed more. Hmm, well, hopefully that'll be okay. Um, but yeah, this should... Oh, the other thing that this does not have is any way to dock. So I included some uh, Kerbal Attachment System ports on here, but I don't have a screwdriver or anything to actually make that connection, like to actually put a port on the other, on the star lifter. So we'll have to figure something out. Gersey Kerman, jump out. Remember that you have to get back in on the top. And let's open this. Not next config, please. Just be a habitat. It's fine. Deploy. Yes. Ah, ha, ha, ha. 
Beautiful. Now we have a massive habitation ring. It spins! Oh my god, it spins. Ah, it didn't spin at the editor. <laughs> oh, pardon me. I'm just delighted by that. I didn't think this thing was going to spin. That looks so freaking cool. Oh, I'm so happy about this. So this is it. This is the Star Lifter Shuttle. This will provide comfort, life support, supplies, recycling, communication, science, everything that our intrepid astronauts could possibly need on their trips to and from Duna. Or, in this case, just to and from uh, interplanetary space. Oh, that's so awesome. So awesome. Start habitat. Oops, missing machinery. That's right. I actually do need the transfer over. Yeah, I don't think it's going to let me transfer that machinery over. Unless... Okay, we are just now coming in with literally just a tiny storage box. Gosh darn it. <laughs> but we are going to make this work. Alright, so we are coming in rapidly. This thing is actually chewing through its monopropellant pretty quickly. But it's so little and adorable and I love it. Alrighty then. We are getting close. Let's slow it on down. Beautiful. Gersey Kerman, go grab. Easy. A screwdriver. You would think that would be standard kit by now, but I forget these things. All right, so it looks like we are going to have to connect these two vessels to make this transfer work. So, let's just throw this port where it's easy to, easy to reach. Probably right here on the front is a little bit safer. So we are just going to staple that to the side. I'm going to have you jump in. I'm going to have my tiny supply pod. It's work complete. Whee! Head on home. By which I mean fall and burn into the atmosphere. Because I do not need you here anymore. Beautiful. Now... This we need to turn and rotate. There, now we want to get this just a little bit further this towards the front of the Starlifter shuttle. Don't bump anything, goodness gracious. Here we go, we seem to be moving in the correct direction. Alright, ooh, goodness gracious. Yeah, these, uh, I have some rather potent, uh, not reaction wheels, but reaction control systems on this, uh, on this ship. I just kind of threw, uh-oh, what's going on? Am I out of monoprop? Oh, lord. All right, um, cool. Here, let's, uh, 
Hmm. How can I? I need to kill our tar our relative velocity completely, and it's already so far away that I'm not going to be able to do. Uh, I need to point at it. And we're in the dark side, so this is this is par for the course with us, I think. And to think I thought this would be easier than docking. Silly, silly me. All right, so let's... A little bit closer. Yeah, let's try to point the port in the right direction at least. Of course, I'm rotating, so I have no idea which way I'm rotating to. Or which way I need to turn. Here, can you just point at the target? There we go. There we are. So let's twist it like so. Stop rotation, switch vessels. Where did I put? There's the port. All right. F5 for safety. Let's see how quickly I can do this. Link. Link. Nothing exploded, I'm so happy. But we should move fairly quickly here. There, can I... Can I please... Transfer. Hmm. I'm not getting the cross feed. Pump. Here. Missing machinery. Aha, here we go. In machinery. And look at that habitat is increasing its load. Looks like it can also be a greenhouse simultaneously, which is pretty neat. Um, that'll be useful for future endeavors, perhaps, or orbital stations. And ta-da! Full load of machinery to get our habitat running. Beautiful. So, let's move it on down here and take these apart and we'll just leave that port on there maybe that'll be useful let's actually grab oops where's your inventory stop it inventory just throw that in your inventory, because you never know when that might come in handy. Just staple that to the side so I know where it is. And off we go. Bonk. Grab. And in. And this we are going to... Let's push it this way. Alright. Thrust limiter. Right, let's deorbit this. Beautiful. So that's all done. So let's take a look at the statistics on this because I believe everything should now be functional and open and all those wonderful things. Eight years. <laughs>
Ah, nice. 130 days of supplies, which I think regenerates, because I'm not sure if this window shows um, the creation of supplies through the Nomomatic and the recyclers and all that. But this should be correct in that they can stay in this vessel for eight and a half years without any issues. So this is exactly what we are looking for. We have plenty of room, plenty of... Um, fun activities for our Kerbals to hang out and do in this big ring. They get a little bit of gravity, which can help uh, help them. I imagine that there's like exercise equipment along the outside here. There's lounge space, eating space, um, all the things that Kerbals need to feel nice and at home. In this, the Starlifter shuttle. Beautiful. Oh, I'm so excited about this. All right, so let's get this moving out to Minmus. Beautiful. Okay, so that will do it for that. Let's turn towards our maneuver. Three minutes, really. Wow. Yeah, this thing has a fairly low thrust-to-weight ratio. Nice, easy half of a G for our um, crew of astronauts on this ship. Oh yeah, because this thing's actually a lot heavier than it was because of the addition of all the material kits and the machinery. But we will be able to fill up these tanks and still have several thousand meters per second of Delta V. If I'm not mistaken, I think we will have still close to three, between three and four thousand meters per second of delta V, which is more than enough to get pretty much anywhere and back. Especially if you have a refueling stop on the way, which I do believe we will have because we will be doing a lot of home basing uh activities out of Minmus. All right, so I think that's it. Um, we have got this all set up and this is on its way out to Minmus. We will be sending over kind of a shuttle bus that can get things to and from the Minmus surface. But unfortunately, we are all out of time. So I will see you all in the next episode.